the pimp, the preacher, and the prostitute. <laughs> You're cheap. You're confusing me terribly. I do that to people. Oh, a picker hat. <laughs> what happened to the airplane? Hey, Scott, I'm going to let her rip. And you'd think he was the one that had been drinking. It's shabby chic, right? <laughs> uh, I'm Scott Cousin. I'm Sheldon Smith. We're pickers. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between, looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. It's not junk to us. La Belle Provence. I think we should try and blend in. <laughs> That's a good one. Here we are in St. Catherine Street in Montreal. Oh, look. I always wanted to visit the Taj Mahal. Perfect. It's probably <laughs> as close as we're going to get. I got to buy the crappiest souvenir I can find in Montreal for my father-in-law. Really tacky, but it's got to be Montreal tacky. You see, this is almost perfect. It's, Tacky's one of That's my... tacky, but it's Canada tacky. It's not Montreal tacky. One of my specialties is tacky. It's got to be really bad. It has to grab you with its ugliness. All right, I think you might be the sole judge of ugliness. <laughs> hey, Scott. Oh. <laughs> A picker hat. <laughs> I think you should have that. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> 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 oh, now here, that's pretty good, Sheldon, don't you think? Olympic Stadium? I could do it. It's hard to get any better than that. Don't forget to get a map. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get a good one for yeah. you because you are navigating as usual. Better throw one of these into. Let's see, back into the rain. Let's go. Quebec is just beautiful at this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. We're heading to Hudson, Quebec, a little west of Montreal, an English-speaking area. Oh, we're going to see Rob. I think Rob's grandmother was an antiques dealer. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Rob's stuff. He's got some modern stuff, some little knickknacks and ghoulias. Ghoulias? Little things. You just made that up, didn't you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, you can't. How can you miss it? Look at the car. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? Scott? How are you? Rob, how are you? Welcome to Hudson. So what's the story? Well, I've been uh, collecting stuff for the last 20 years, and I think I'm getting on the, uh, the verge of becoming a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> when I go out to buy stuff, I feel like I have to buy something. Things I like to collect typically are mid-century modern. I love the design, the shape. So you're looking to sell some stuff? I am. And where is it? Oh, uh, we got some stuff in the garage. We got some stuff inside, and I've got a bar just down the street. Having the bar helps me justify, oh, yeah, I can hang that up in the bar somewhere. <laughs> Try to justify it. You want to start in the garage? Sure. Yeah. Wow. That's sort of cool. Got a hole in the other side. Looks like somebody <laughs> somebody got mad and they got booted out of the tavern. Um, <laughs> What's this, Rob? A hopper lantern. I just liked it. <laughs> you have a place to put your ice inside. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever drank no. that beer? The garage is always the best place to shop because if it's in the garage, it's further from the heart. Got everything from us. Uh, Burke chairs. What you call them? Burke. It's a company out of Dallas that basically did a imitation of the Saarinen chair. And these ones are sort of neat too. Yeah, that's by a German modernist. It's called the kangaroo chair. You can tell by how the legs sort of turn. Looks right. like a kangaroo about to leap. See the Saarinen chairs regularly. You rarely see the kangaroo chairs. That's an old Molson sign that the breweries would give to the individual bar owners. This one's obviously been worn a lot. Yeah, yeah it's, it's got a little bit of mileage on it. Somebody shot it or something. Bullet. Porcelain's all <laughs> yeah. come off. What would you be looking to get out of that? 100 bucks. That sign wasn't in perfect condition, but it was a porcelain sign. It was probably from the 20s or 30s. Yeah, I think it would be 100 bucks. Yeah. Deal. Excellent. All right. We should double up on that and make 100 easy on a quick flip. Did you know they invented five-pin bowling in Quebec? Yeah. The rationale behind my buying isn't always rational. 
Holy cow. Those are uh, actual cannonballs. I have no idea why I bought those. <laughs> oh, man. You know, sometimes I'll just see something, I go, that'll make a great Christmas gift. Cannonballs are, are kind of unique. <laughs> just so happens, I, I know a lady that has a couple of cannons. I'll tell you what, five bucks each. Oh, sold. OK. <laughs> For five bucks, yeah. deal. <laughs> Sort of cool. A 60s no-name copy of a Danish design, but it's a decorative piece that a kid would like to have for their house, right? Yeah, I'd go 30 bucks on that. Yeah, I'll go 30 on that. Yeah. Deal. See, Rob, can I ask you about the clock? It's an old American Art Deco neon clock without the neon. <laughs> <laughs> what would you want for something like that? Uh it is in the garage. <laughs> $100. What do you think? 75 Sure. Deal. <laughs> I thought he was fair on his prices. He was leaving a little on the table for us, and he did so <laughs> willingly. I noticed a painting over here that's really goofy. The pimp, the preacher, and the prostitute. <laughs> Who painted it? Kent Thompson, local Hudson resident. It's not exactly a group of seven, is it? <laughs> it's a group of three. <laughs> it's a group of three. <laughs> what would it take to put it in my house? Mmm, 100 bucks. That's the problem with unknown artists. I, I don't know if 100 bucks is a good deal or a bad deal. It's part of the game. There's two ways you, you try and get somebody to come down on their price. It's goofy. Yeah. It's oil on board, it looks like. Yeah. One is you talk about how good it is. You know what? I like it, great character, great color in the piece. It's a pity to see it in the garage, but you just can't afford it. I could justify it at 50 bucks. They usually feel good about the fact that you like it and come down a little bit. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll go fit. I love it. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing I've bought in a long time. <laughs> Second way to get somebody to come down to their price. They got a few nicks on them, but they're... You just beat it up a little bit because it's got some problem. Usable. Yeah. Right? You exactly. wouldn't collect them so much as use them. Yeah. What would you be looking at, just out of curiosity? Those would be about 150 each. I mean, they've all got little nicks on here, yeah. right? Because they've been used. Yeah, they've all just got the little scrapes. Can I make money off them? That is the question. It's going to affect how much we offer. It's going to affect how much we sell it for. How about 400 for the four? Uh... OK. Perfect. Deal. Well, it emptied out your garage a little. I got some more stuff inside. Let's go. All right. I love the way you've decorated. Well, thank you. I like the table. You see these in teak all the time. Mm -hmm. But this kind of design, it was an absolute killer piece. I'm guessing because it's sitting in your house filled with stuff, it's probably pretty dear to you. Well, you'd have to want it more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and how much do you want it? <laughs> how much do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious what you would want for it. Around 1500 See, which isn't bad if you're buying it for a piece of furniture for yourself. Yeah. But for us to buy it to resell it, too big a risk. Yeah. I'd love to have it in my house, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, come downstairs. We've got some more stuff down here. So you got a Jacobson chair. Yes, that is uh, Arne Jacobson's egg chair. Or Jacobson, Jacobson. however you want to call them. Classic design made from the 50s right through to today. It's just one of those pieces that, you know, you always want to have if you collect modern stuff. an original piece with a replaced cushion. Uh, hey, there's money in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, they're not really that comfortable, but they look nice, you know? <laughs> what would you want for that, just out of curiosity? Well, 2,500. I just, I mean, I don't think that that's a bad price, except that the leather's so rough. I'm not convinced I'd even get that back to Calgary before the leather just went kish. No, it's a great piece, but I don't think there's any money to be made on it for us at that price. I'm not really discouraged because I love the stuff. I love just looking at it, I love seeing it. But if we don't find anything that we can make a bit of money on, it's time to head to another room. The 
things in the house were, well, he's decorated his home with. He's a little more attached to them. This is a Danish hanging bar. Now, I don't know if I have the key. <laughs> uh, How about tape to the back? That would have That's been a good idea. That's where it should be. There we go. Oh, Isn't that cool? Bottles over there, your working, glasses here. And a working surface here. Yeah, when right. It's anyway, it's a fun piece, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely killer item. There's a lineup of people that are looking for something like that. So what would you want for something like this? Uh, let's see. You're making such good use of it. <laughs> I found the right spot for it, so. <laughs> 200 bucks? Yeah, not for See, real. I was thinking 100 bucks. That's, and then, bucks? then I might price it at 150, 180. How about 150? One and a quarter, final offer. Deal. Let's get to the bar, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Have not picked out of a bar for a long time. If nothing else, we can get a beer. Wait. Oh, there it is, Chateau de la. What a great old building. So this is the bar. It's, uh, Built in 1898. This bar is historic. It's one of the oldest continuously run bars in, in Canada. The railroad came through Hudson about 1890, and the hotel followed. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's go pick it. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Rob took us to his mini theater, and it was a real neat little thing. So this is, oh, I basically took four I of the hotel it. rooms and turned it into a little mini theater. Oh, he done up that little theater in a very Art Deco theme. We rented out for children's parties. And Premieres. Yeah. It's had some great theater seats, really cool decorations. Let's get picking. Okay. okay. You want to go yeah. upstairs and see the, you bet. the rest of the stuff? Well, you just bet. before we go, okay. your phone. Ah. Looks like it's a Northern Electric or something like that. I think it is. Probably 1930s, maybe 40s. It's two-colored, but I don't think it started life out two-colored. I think it was probably purple at okay. one time. It wasn't a factory paint job, but it was a really good paint job. What would you sell it for? 50? 40 bucks and we got a deal. Deal. Perfect. Let's go pick it. All right. <laughs> and if that's what he's got in his theater, I can hardly wait to get upstairs and see what he's got in his store. And sure enough, it's packed. It's full of goodies. Hey, you got the blue nose. I do have the blue nose. But now we're in a big new space. What do you think, Scott? Do we need a hood ornament? Important that we keep the ball rolling and crack another deal. An old parking sign here. Oh, I love it. Montreal taxi stand? Yeah. You can't park there, you just take the sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've owned those before. They're always a novelty item. It's cool. It's it old. Is. Something somebody would want to put in their bar, decorate a store with it. Is that something we need back in the front? It price? all depends on the price. Mm. 150? See, I think I, we could do 100 I was just about to say we could do Because we'd probably sell for 150 175 Okay. okay. Deal. Excellent. Sort of a neat planter, eh? Shabby chic, right? It's a shabby yeah. chic sort yeah, of piece. exactly right. One of the areas that Sheldon and I disagree on sometimes is the whole shabby chic thing. You don't like it, right? I rarely find shabby is very chic. <laughs> but you don't think that because of the color that somebody's going to want that? But it sells. And that was a nice green piece that had been painted. See, I think that's a useful thing. It had a bunch of levels. Somebody could use that in their house. What's the price on the plants then? I could let you have that for 80 bucks. Tell you what, my partner hates it, but I'll step out and go 50. 60. Not gonna argue for 10 bucks. You've been fair. 60. Deal. Okay. 60. Yeah. If Scott's happy with that as a screaming deal, then I'm screaming happy too. Hey, I just spotted something. You got some uh, water skis here. Yes, probably from the 1950s. These come from Magog, Quebec. I love early sporting goods. How'd you like to ski on that? Well, I can't get over the square end on it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Not much of a rudder on that baby. Nice wow. condition, real good visual item. They're great. What would you need for them? 40 bucks. Done. Done? Yep. Excellent. No negotiation. <laughs> no negotiation. You know your water ski, Sheldon. <laughs> Desirable and Canadian. And if Sheldon wears a Speedo and rides those babies, he can have them for nothing. <laughs> I'll hold you up on that one. <laughs> uh, I saw a horse over here, a couple of them, actually. Yes. I just wanted to see if I could get a sense of age. It's got some red paint on it, it looks like. 
missing its horse hair that would have had horse hair up there and horse yeah, and hair in the tail. Yeah. But it's still sort of fun, eh? Yeah, kind of crude. Probably homemade by somebody for their kid. Yeah, exactly. What would you want for something like that? 175. And what about the other horse? I saw the bits of a rocking horse. <laughs> he would have had leather ears on him at one time. It, it was a glider, not a rocker. A really desirable, saleable item. Now, what would you be looking at for this one? Well, this is a rural Quebec piece. Do you know what I like about this, though, is it's all original paint. Nobody's dicked with them. Exactly. That's what I like. I'd need 250 on that. And what if you took, what if we took two of them? 300? Yeah, we can Deal? do 300. Done. Thank you. Perfect. These are really cool. Screening deal. I'm thinking we should go down to the bar and celebrate. <laughs> Some good picking. <laughs> Rob was a good guy to work with. He had interesting things. Always a smile on his face. Oh, I thought it was great, especially when you're dealing with people who have similar interests as you do. Let's load her in. Let's load her in. We made a friend, and you know what? He's going to find us some more stuff. For once, Sheldon, I agree with you on water skis. These are cool. Anything you want to uh, hold in place with this? <laughs> Just when we thought our picking was over that day. I just happened to know a guy not too far away from here All right. that might have a house full of Star Wars stuff. I wouldn't mind seeing that. So I told him I would send you guys by there. Perfect. Well, that's been a pleasure. Gentlemen. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, Rob. That was a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> that's great news. We're excited. We don't have to travel too far. Rob turned out to be such a great guy. And now he sent us on to John, which is unbelievable. When you can get from one pick to another pick a block and a half away. Rob told me that John had some Star Wars stuff. I'm the Star Wars guy in Montreal. A little leery in Star Wars. I'll be watching you, the master, do his thing. <laughs> now, I think he's just up here. Stuff everywhere. Hey, you must be John. How you doing? Good. I'm Sheldon. Nice we to meet met you. John. Who's hiding back there? Oh, I'm, I'm Rita. His mother, Rita, and John's daughter, Ruby, as well. What's the puppy's name? Coco. That's Coco. 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 Oh, you're Coco. You're He's an attack dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the story here? Just moved in 10 days ago. <laughs> Still unpacking. Garbage is free. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, uh, well, you know, we come uh, do some picking. Is it here or is it in the house as well? Some here, some in the basement. How is it you have so much? Antique stuff. About seven or eight years ago, maybe more, I decided I was going to open an antique shop and it um, didn't work out too well. <laughs> <laughs> We've but heard I had that a lot story of fun. before. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good time. And your shovel with the broken handle? You can have that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice one used for maple syrup or something like that. How much? <laughs> well, how much are you offering? I think uh, I better hey. ask you no, first. No, 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 you're the seller, I'm the buyer. <laughs> I don't know, 10 bucks? It sounds good to me. It's good. Good. Nice. <laughs> so, hey. Can't help but make 30 or 40 dollars. Can we poke around in here? Yes. Of course you can, yeah. Would you like my arch? Yeah. Did you strip it? No, I bought it as is. I'm curious about this little desk, though. Is that something you'd part with, Rita? Yeah, make me an offer. I think to me that's worth 60 bucks. I was thinking sort of 125. Well, that's a retail price. No deal there. Can I ask you about the trunks? Something's falling. <laughs> can grab it in, huh? Bottom one here be up for sale? Yes, it is. And what would you like for it? Well, supposing I say a huge price and then you. Then I won't dig it out. Oh. I'll see what it's all about. <laughs> I do want to sell, but everything I have is near and dear to me. Tell me what you'd be comfortable with on it. We'll be going to put it at 350. Yeah, I don't think we can do that on yeah. it. I don't think we're even close. Well, it's an old sort of city washstand. Interesting because it's sort of gouged out the decoration just with a chisel by hand, right? This one's too big for that thing, but it would sit right just like that, right? 
They're not necessarily in style now, but that was a nice small one. Could go in just about any corner. Put it this way, I'm, I'm thinking we might be able to sell that for 80. So I'm thinking sort of 40. And I'm not sure if it's because of the way I approached her. You're cheap. Well, you tell me what would make you happy and, and we'll just say yes or no, right? Did I not just do that? No, you didn't oh, give me a price, didn't give you a price for that one. You're all confusing me terribly. I'm, I do that to people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at my shirt. <laughs> no, I have blue eyes. <laughs> Can I use that to my advantage? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> 75. I like it enough I'd go 60 on it. OK. Hey. Oh, Rita. Yay. <laughs> we did See, it. that's the hardest part, Rita. Now I'm going to give you everything, right? Now, exactly. I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, I see one other thing. I bought it at a flea market when I was a kid. When you were a kid? When I was a kid, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's got to have some sentimental value, right? Not anymore. I'm not drinking anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> my kids and stuff. Now, you know better than me what these sell for, because out west, we don't have Dow, right? You don't? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it used to just be in Montreal, oh. right? Quebec local beer. Right. I've got about 15 of them in my house. All right, huh? Different hey, one. And Scott has not quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> How much? Ten uh, bucks. That's perfect. Ten's per perfect for me. Sweet. Wow, good deal. See, as easy wow. as that, Rita. John is much more of a business person. Is it correct? Yeah. So you gross. say yes, yeah. you shake hands, yeah. and okay. we're done. Yeah. He knows he can buy again. I wish he had the authority to sell the furniture. Let's get inside. <laughs> All right. I can tell you just moved in. <laughs> I want to look at some Star Wars, then. Yeah. R2-D2. Oh, yeah, he's tough. Yeah, he's a, he's a good one. I think Star Wars hit a lot of people that grew up in the 70s pretty hard. You see, these can be really expensive. They can, yeah, I know. The jowl with the plastic cape's the one you want, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 18,000 bucks. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is. I have a giant passion since the 70s for Star Wars toys. Star Wars is really the first mass-marketed toy. That's when people started buying figures and keeping them in mint condition. That's the third one, right? Yeah, especially I find a lot of uh, a lot of the ladies like the Ewoks or something. Yeah, I don't know why. All, I never the, guys, all the guys never like the Ewoks, oh. yeah. Most of the stuff he had was pretty ordinary stuff. Oh, yeah, there he is. There is Luke. Corvette Summer. <laughs> That's a real winner, eh? I get pretty ridiculed from my friends, but... Uh... But he did have a couple of really good dolls. Oh, you got a bunch of Boba Fetts in here. I got two Boba Fetts in there. Oh. This is 12-inch Star Wars figure That's right. from the first movie. Yep. Uh, hardest one to buy. Chewbacca's or a dime a dozen. That's right. But Boba Fett is tough, particularly with his rocket launcher, and more importantly, with his scalp. The Wookiee scalp. Exactly. That's the key. That's right. This is about as clean as it's going to get. I do toy conventions and I sell Star Wars toys. This one I paid 120 bucks for it. Oh, I got to think about that. Sheldon, this would be a personal thing because I don't think you're going to want to have any part of this. <laughs> do you got any little Boba Fett figures? Well, I'm a toy seller. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. I would sell that for 25 bucks. That's what I would sell it for at my toy con. Wow. And would it sell for 25 bucks? Oh, easily. They only make certain amounts, especially of the ones that they know that people like, Boba right. Fett. So what would you do for the big Boba Fett and the little Boba Fett? Well, I have to sell that one at 120 because that's what I paid. But if you wanted them both, I'd give them for like 130 bucks. That's 10 bucks, which compares to your store. Five bucks left leaves a room for you know $5 profit. OK, we'll do a deal on like that. Sweet. Excellent. All right. There's Star Wars things for Scott. There's some wood for Sheldon. I think it's homemade. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It had all sorts of applied carvings to it. I love the diamonds on the front. Yeah. Looks like the top has been a new top. She'd taken the old top off. Because the the, uh, the other top was absolutely chopped to pieces. My guess is if she'd left the old one on, it would have been a better piece of furniture. Oh, gosh, it looks like it was a different color in a prior life. Did you strip it, Rita? No, I had it stripped. I 
hate it when people take the paint off things. Leave it alone, okay? Leave it alone. And they finally stripped it down to this awful red and green. Awful like a hard... red and green? Mm. Well, I know that that's the color, but it wasn't the color that I wanted, so. You know, I'm, I'm getting along okay with Rita. What would you need out of that? A lot. <laughs> Somehow or other, she's dealing with me. Well, how about if I say a thousand? Ooh, you got some silence there. That was pretty good. No, you see, I think if it had the original top and it was still green and red, I think I'd pay a thousand for it. I don't think we could make any money on that. How about 999? <laughs> <laughs> If we waltzed a little bit, because I was going to say 350, 400, Scott, oh, no. Scott's looking at me. But is there some, some ground in the middle there, or are we wasting our time? Maybe 950. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think that doesn't leave any room for profit. Well, let's leave that for a moment. Okay, carry on. The keeper? I, I hadn't really thought about selling that, because I sit it usually on top of a, an armoire, and it looks kind of nice. I'm sure it does. Yeah. That's why we like it. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you're interested in selling it. If you really like it for 150 you can have it. Oh, right, Rita. Oh, wow. See yes. how easy that she was? was. Yeah. Oh, that's better than the normal one. Yeah. Britain's motorcycle. There was also a box of lead cowboys and Indians and soldiers. I do motorcycle swap meets. Okay. So you take that and sell it to somebody that's got motorcycles and they like collectibles, right? Yeah. Now this is an excellent one. It's, it's headless, tailless, it's the, legless. The headless, headless, legless horseman. <laughs> but there was about 15 or 20 of them that were good. Maybe I'll pull a line that my mom's using. You can make an offer for the box. Um, um 50 bucks for the box. Sold. I'm happy. All right, good. Okay, well, let's get some packing stuff so we can yeah. get out of your hair. Yeah. Got it. Rita, John, that was a lot of fun. Thanks so much. I've never met a guy like John that's got a smile on his face all the time. I like their hats. I think they're pretty <laughs> cool with the hats. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Ruby, it was great meeting you. I should have been dealing with you, though, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's tough. She's tough. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good luck okay. on your travels Thank and happy you picking, guys. guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. See you later, guys. Bye. I expect nothing when we essentially cold call somebody. So we came away with a few things. I'm pretty happy. Scott, I haven't been this excited about picking in a long time. The old Montreal Antiques show. Our timing is great. We just so happen to be in Montreal. The show is on. We hear this is the best antique show in Canada. High-end merchandise. Not unusual to see items in the thousands, some even in the tens of thousands of dollars. We're just hoping we find one or two great items at a fair price. We're a little bit like fish out of water. Everyone's dressed up to the nines except me. Here's a couple of prairie boys. Oh, don't even get inside the door and somebody's giving me a glass of champagne. I'm ahead of the game already. Not the sort of place a picker would go, but we're there to buy low. How much is that one? Five. Five forty, huh? Oh. Well, in this instance, buy medium and sell high. You never know, we could find one key item that makes our night. Isn't that a sweet little piece? Wow. One of the booths we walked into, single item caught my eyes, and it was a great miniature chest of drawers. Wow. It's like jewelry. And dovetail. Yeah. And that would definitely have been an apprentice piece, right? Yeah. It's likely something that was done by an apprentice carpenter to show his skills at the end of the day to get his ticket. It's that kind of quality. You can't get a better miniature than that. You Isn't that the can't. truth? What's he got on it? Twelve ninety-five. You know, if we could get that at a grand, it's one of those things that you, you look for years and years and years to find something as good as that. I think Sheldon wants to talk to you about okay. that little miniature. How you doing, Sheldon? 
Where would you have found this piece? I found this in an estate in Ottawa. Oh, you know, okay. it's within my peripheral. That makes yeah. sense because I think it's English, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, makes yeah, perfect sure. sense English, that it would have come yeah. out of Ottawa. It's a good thing. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. So the question is, what's it going to cost to get us to drive it away? <laughs> And do I need another glass? <laughs> Two glasses, and I'll join you. <laughs> I think I would do 1,100. Um, you know, could you say 1050? I can do 1050. Yeah, uh, gentlemen's. I can do 1050. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you so much. To come down 250 dollars within five minutes of the door opening, I'm happy with that. That's that's good. Yeah. That's a guy that's trying to sell. They're fun, actually. There's a good team there, and I, I like the cowboy sort of gunslinger approach to things. Look at that piece of gold shider. If we were in England, wow. It's going to be a little pricier than what we're normally buying. 38. I mean, it's nice, but wow. Look at this table. 9,500. This is some stuff you're never going to see again, eh? Yeah. Look at this coffee table, another $9,500. Yeah. Sometimes it's an advantage. <laughs> Wow. Having two simple prairie boys. I'm a lumberjack and I am OK. <laughs> attack one Quebec dealer. Oh, man. Who owns this booth? One of the booths had some great folk art. That is the <laughs> Canoe Cup. All sorts of Quebec items. Boy, it doesn't get much more Canadian than that. But the one that leapt out at us, probably my favorite item of the whole show, was a little folk art biplane. What a great item. Francois, where did you find this piece? I bought it from a collector here in Quebec. Was it mounted like this? or was Yeah. It... So you've got it marked 525. Okay. Keeping in mind... I've got to eat. And he's got children. <laughs> As I do home. too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I've got a deal for you. We'll give you enough so that your kids can eat, and you leave me enough that my kids can eat. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. I can do it at 450 for you guys. Not real, real old but it's got what you want out of a piece of folk art. It really grabs your eye. Look the condition. Francois, bonne chance. Thank you. Sir. I was going to try you. and grind you, but he already said yes. It's a good guy. It's my friend. <laughs> yeah. Mon ami. <laughs> the dealers have all been flexible, and they can appreciate we're there to try and turn things over. What happened to the airplane? They're leaving a little room. Hey, Scott. <laughs> I'm going to let her rip. <laughs> Catch. And you'd think he was the one that had been drinking. <laughs> We've moved on. I love that right there. Wow, look Isn't at that. Isn't that a great dry sink? We saw a classic Canadiana item. This is 140 years old. Tell us what a dry sink is well, for. Just for cleaning up after just, dishes or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's where they would have had a bucket here to do washing and things, extra storage for more buckets there, or washing vegetables. Pre-plumbing? Right. Pre yeah. We see the big ones sell for $3,500 out west. It's got that Natural beautiful wear. feel to it, right? Yeah. It's, it was great. It was small, painted red, original red color. It had some repaint on the green on the inside. Got patina. If you yes. had to say, what's patina? <laughs> There it is. There's right patina. There. We haven't bought one painted piece of furniture nope. in Ontario or Quebec. We haven't seen a good piece yet. So that said, can you help us out on this price-wise? <laughs> a little on the pricey side. She was asking 1200 But we thought maybe that was worth negotiating on. I would sell it to you for 1000 I think that's always a magic number, isn't it? Yeah. You get below that, <laughs> you feel thousands. like you've been done. Yeah. <laughs> you get above that, you feel like you've done well. So, yeah. so we may as yeah. well take it. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. Great. I'm happy to be taking that Thank west. You. Fantastic. Good. It's the best little piece we've seen for a while. Yeah. I've got a soft spot for bronzes and brasses and small things. If you're asking for the piece, there's this stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. The guard cutter. It was a little bit naughty. It doesn't and look like it, something the Tsar would have ordered. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never no. know. And I spotted a really cool little piece. I think of you every time I see that. <laughs> Probably either a soap dish or a key dish or something like that. I could see you with your business card lying in there. It was almost like the devil was holding out his arms and legs to envelop something. Ah, oh, monsieur. Now, oh, yes. 
The devil's advocate, eh? Yeah. It's a typical 19th century European bronze. I've ring. never seen a devil on a bronze um, before. But it has absolutely no marks, which you would have thought there'd be something. And I Well, you know why, no. though? When this was made, if the religious community knew who made it, they would have been ostracized. Yeah, there could be something there, absolutely. <laughs> we had to come up with a fair market value, so I put 750 to make a profit, and I'm willing to, you know, to play around. I mean, I do have to make a... You we know, all a have to make a little bit of money, right? A little right? bit of money. It was pricey, but you know what? It's such a cool item, and there are certain people that really like that occultist, devilish type thing. So tell me this. We're getting ready to go. What's the rock bottom dealer price on that? I, I would do five and a half. And if you hit me over the head and treat me nice and fill up my glass of wine, 500 bucks. But you were talking about something else as well. Maybe, well, uh, I like that Riapel. Well, I shouldn't say that. My wife really likes Riapel. Well, you know. Riapel is probably the most internationally recognized painter to come out of Canada. He's God. In Quebec, he's God. That was a print from an exhibition. There would have been hundreds of these made yes, for the he exhibition. Yes, but he may not have signed them all, though. That's what's different. Yeah. That's the only thing to me that makes it different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought that the 495 price point was, was reasonable, and if you wanted to do a deal for a few things, then, uh, you know, I can, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul, you know? I mean, well, let's go back to the front and see what we can do. So, if I was to take the <laughs> Riapel and this one, what would you do? 850. And just before we finish, I mean, is that not Canadian? Yeah. Letter it's a holding. clip. So, yeah, it's for, it's for holding letters or, or notes. I've seen them most often used nailed to the door, and you can leave a note. Victorian times, you know, people would come around and leave cards of visits. Right. You know. So would we do 900 on all of them? And we spend a little more sometimes. You said 850? 5, 350? 900? I'll spread it out. Yeah, fine. But the profit is there. Excellent. I'm yeah. a happy Put man. Put your finger in there. That's it. <laughs> It was great. I had a couple glasses of champagne. It was very civilized picking. Mm. Merci. Thank you. It's been a long, long time since I've seen that much good stuff in one place. Exactly. I'd go back to the old Montreal show. That was a lot of fun. So I went to the Habs game last night. How was that? It was good, exciting. You could feel the electricity in the air. I used to be a huge fan of Jean Beliveau when I was a kid. I was too. I wore number four right up until the time I took Bobby Clark's number and wore number 16. Today's the day that we're going to get some of our purchases appraised. Yeah, I'm Patrick. I do auction for the past 25 years here in Montreal. An auctioneer's appraisal is probably the closest you're going to get to a true market value because they're not just holding on to them, they're selling them. Hey, Patrick. Walking in, I couldn't help but notice this outstanding desk. Yeah, this is a gorgeous desk. But, uh, this desk used to belong to Mussolini. <laughs> I almost feel guilty putting a little rocking horse on top of <laughs> no, Mussolini's uh, desk, but... Uh, I don't feel guilty at all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't either. I was really interested to hear what Patrick had to say about that little naive rocker. Yeah, well, Is, give you a hand. Thank you. It's very primitive. Because that's not something that I've ever dealt with. It's a nice horse, and you see that he had a good life. Probably from 1900, 1910. Still can see a little bit of the red paint on it. Yeah. We paid 100 for that rocker. Hard to figure out the demand for that kind of an item. Yeah. Auction is very surprising, yeah. but you always have to start with a minimum price. Right. I would uh, start it in my auction around $300. That, that would be the rock bottom price. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> and I would expect to have at least $500. <laughs> Bingo! That was a pretty good number for me. 
The second horse I saw, it's a very good condition. It's almost mint. So it might be an uh, Eaton Canada toy. Yeah, yeah, you could just see a little kid at the turn of the century do that. Yeah. Give it a little bit of a run there, Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the saddle is very nice. The saddle is good, isn't it? It's the first time I see one complete like this. Yeah, we were very pleased to get this. And what about the other horse? We paid 200 for the glider horse. The lowest reasonable price we could start it would be around 500. Oh, good. Excellent. That makes me feel good. Yeah. The highest price we should get for the horse would be around $1,200. So I hope that you would make be a money good, with it. That would be a good day. Uh, ching! Bingo! <laughs> Looks like we've got a potential of nearly $2,000 for the pair. That's a pretty good return. Really appreciate it. But it's nice to meet you. And good luck in your uh, twist. The ongoing, the never-ending journey. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was a great thing meeting Patrick, happy with the things he told us. Very uh, effervescent people, they're full of energy. It's goofy. We're standing in the alley well, waiting wait. for something There's, to come. Yeah, this morning I got a call from Rod. I told the guys I had something special that I thought they might like. So what did he tell you about this goofy thing? Oh, it sounds good. Here was the key. It's red. Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hold on. <laughs> and sure enough, in the passenger seat, he's got the big red bird. <laughs> wow, that's a wow, big Wow, that's, that's life size. size. <laughs> they put him up here. Oh, man. Oh, Isn't that cool? He's yeah. sweet. Yeah, it's about, uh, about 100 years old. He's got some nice wear to him. And he's red. <laughs> red is. <laughs> Folk art is absolutely the craziest market in the business. You can get an American windmill that was made in a small town somewhere that can go for tens of thousands of dollars. And most people would look at it and go, I don't understand why. That piece though, it had everything going for it. You know what I really like? I like the motion. They didn't just plant the other foot there. I like that motion. Yeah. yeah he looks like he's traveled a little bit in his lifetime, so I like him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I picked this up on my travels through uh, rural Ontario. Yeah. Came out of an old hotel. You just bought it at his? Well, I saw it and I went, wow, you know, it's, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, it's big. <laughs> so, what's the damage? I need $1,000. Wow. I know it sounds like a lot, but... You know, I was hoping to hear less, but I wasn't surprised. This is a very nice piece of folk art. And wow. We are at the Montreal Old Antique Show, and we saw pieces that I don't think hold a candle to that turkey for triple, quadruple the price. 38. Look at this table. 9,500. 3,200. Wow. So I thought to myself, I'm not leaving without that turkey. Hey, we don't drop a thousand bucks without at least having a little discussion. By the way, my recollection of the little parlay was buy it. <laughs> Deal? <laughs> hey, I love that turkey. We could pick this country for the next 10 years and not see as good a piece of folk art as that. I'm gonna let him ride in the front with me. <laughs> I think we can get 2,500 for it, but the sort of upper limit on a piece like that might be four or $5,000, who knows? We're gonna sit on it for a while and try and make the bingo off that turkey. Are you feeling strong? Oh man, he's a heavy guy, eh? <laughs> I'm <right>. happy about <laughs> that, bud. Yeah. If somebody enjoys it as much as I did, then yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, isn't it lovely? It's great, isn't great. it? Great. <laughs> she didn't run away screaming. It can be between 10,000 to 100,000. Wow. Yes. You say yes or no, you don't do it. OK. I love your basement, man. Great. Yeah. I thought you said you love me. That's it, but that's OK. Wow. There's stuff everywhere. Holy. You are hurting me, man. You almost had me crying there yeah. for a minute. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm Scott Cousins. I'm Sheldon Smithens. And we're Pickers. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores, and all the back roads in between, looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. It's not junk to us. I went to the Habs game last night. I used to
used to be a huge fan of Jean Beliveau when I was a kid. What was your nickname when you played hockey? Uh, Goldilocks, because I had long hair like this. Somebody tagged you? It was more important for me to have girlfriends than it was to have short hair. So now that we know <laughs> what, what people called me, what was your nickname? Well, at the Crowd House at university, I was known as Schmuck. <laughs> We're in the eastern townships of Quebec, east and south of Montreal. On our way to Scottstown. There it is, 26K. We're off the beaten path, and that's a good thing for a pet. It's an old, established area, lots of old farms. We're going to see Miriam and Mark. She's been collecting, apparently, for 15 years, but I know she wants to sell. Here we go. OK, yeah, that looks like it. This is it right here. Yeah. Hello. Scott, how are you? Hi. Hi. Okay, I'm Sheldon. I do all my studies in Montreal as a historian. I like the new France period, 200 years ago. I like the style, the furniture, the way of living, everything. So why are you selling? You become old. <laughs> I have a son of 26 years, and he, doesn't to, care and he don't yeah. care about antiques yeah. at all. There's a certain segment of today's young people that just don't care about this old stuff. So that's good for us because it means that there's not a family member laying in the weeds putting a claim to all the good pieces. Yeah, we have a very whole loom. Wow, that's cool. From the 17th century from Quebec in the township area. It's a very museum piece. Yeah. So how did you come about it? I was visiting a farmer and I was in a barn and it was all in pieces. And yeah. he says he's going to burn it next week. Oh no. To burn it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fire I say I take all the parts <laughs> and I take it. What would something yeah. like this sell for? An evaluator told me it can be between 10,000 to 100,000. Wow. There's no price about it. What would you ever compare it to? There'd be so yeah. few. We'll never see another one. So right. we may as well find out what it would cost right. to buy this one. The minimum oh, I would sell is 5,000. No doubt it's worth every penny and more. Yeah. But to a museum, not to a couple of pickers. Right. <laughs> Is this an old primitive shingle maker? For yeah, wood exactly. Shingles? It's an old one mom, 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 from uh, 19, uh, 1900. Right. Also from the area. Oh, it's really it. uh, original and is uh, in good condition. How did you get this? Also by farmers. Farmers? And you see the mark of the hammer or any tool who was used to do oh, it, yeah. to cut it? It's make it very original. Miriam, what would you want for the uh, The evaluation bag? was around $200. It's a nice thing. It's interesting, isn't it? I love it, but I'm taking it out west where nobody made shingles out of wood out there. So I want to try and keep myself into that for the least amount of money possible. Now, are you negotiable? Because I love this piece. It's so primitive. Well, let's see what else they got. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to strike up a deal. I love doing a quick buy. The game is on. What is your offer? Could we pay you $100 for that? I will go to 125 Is that all right? Ball. Well, let's get the ball rolling. 125 sold. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can we go inside your sure, house and see some more? Well, somebody's got that in their porch. Let's go. We know they're going to have something good in the house. Ah, so wow. we have a lot of primitive here for you. Yes. Yeah. This is a mysterious uh, piece. Yes, it is, isn't it? And a little tiny bit of the original paint left on it. It's a very nice piece. It's a mystery piece, though, isn't yeah. it? Yes. I believe it to be American. Miriam thought it was American as well. With the hat, it looked part of the American story, according to the hat. Where would you have found this? In a farmer's place, in a barn. Everything's from a farmer's place yes. in a barn. <laughs> <laughs> Which way is the barn? Where do we go? Miriam writes for a farm magazine, and she would travel the countryside from farm to farm, she'd ask if they had things they wanted to dispose of in the barns, and that's how she got most of the pieces. Are you interested? I think I am. What do you say, Miriam? For the price? Yes. $300. To me, that's a retail, maybe even beyond. He's a little bit dear for, uh, for resale. If I actually knew what it was, then I might be able to figure out, do I have a market for that or don't I? It could be a decorative piece also somewhere. Well, I'll make you an offer. I'd say $100. I say 
think about it. Okay. <laughs> I'll let this stout gentleman rest yeah, here. Yeah. Maybe it gets packaged with another item. Maybe we come back to it and buy it at 100. Maybe there's some room to maneuver. Now, this. Oh, that is a big piece. The, big piece. The it's cigar a piece. It was to, to make cigar. So you put the plant inside. You'd wrap it in yeah, the leaves, yeah, obviously, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. In good condition, excellent condition. Really? Nothing's chipped or broken really no. off of it at all. Uh, you could still make cigars? Yes. Or maybe something a little ne more nefarious yeah. than that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what are you asking for that? That is a big piece. And of course, big piece for her means big money. <laughs> I'm still curious what you're asking for. It's $500. Oh. I think I'm just going to leave that for now yeah. and work my way in here. Sure, yeah, go ahead. That is a big piece. Why <laughs> 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 I'm not sure if it's because she thought I had a good eye or she thought I was an easy mark. What is it? It, it looks like it's got something it's to do with maple mold. syrup. The, yeah. yeah, it yeah. is beginning 1800. Yes. How come it's got a price on it? That's what I want to know. Do you have like this open as a shop? No, or we no. Get, we in the past, but we don't. We are How long ago? Three, four years ago. Yeah. Okay. The bad thing is, it was an antique store, and she knows what she's doing. The good thing is, we can really bargain with her, because she's in the biz. And when you're in the biz, fair game. Let's see how good your memory is. How much is it? It was evaluated at 9,000. Wow. Well, that is a big piece. Yeah, that's right. I'm putting that back. What about this cabinet here? Is that a big piece? No. Can I take a closer oh, look at the ahead. cabinet? Go sure. It's an old cabinet from 1800. At that time, it was beef blue. So when you say beef blue, well, that's what they mixed up with something to paint? Yeah. <laughs> It's original, it's primitive, perfect size. Anyone would love to have that in their house. I found it in a farm, it was in pieces. We have to rebuild it completely. This is a homemade piece, I think. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 70, it's, it's early. 1850, 1870? Yeah. It's an early, yes. Yeah. You know what I like, Scott? I like the fact that it's truly been sitting on the floor. Oh, everything's rotted right off of it. Yeah. The back yeah. is all right. The yeah. back yeah. is but good. But can I take a peek at the back? Uh, oh, sure, of course. Sure. Here. Here. It's yeah. warm in here. <laughs> da -da, da -da. <laughs> That's right, for sure. <laughs> It looks just what I'm looking for. It looks right. It's it's planked, it's primitive. Nobody's messed around with it other than maybe just no. pieced it back together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you interested? It's so primitive, it's very I love primitive, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would say it's, uh, 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 sincerely, it's $400. That was a good price. But I knew because she's in the biz, I could try and negotiate with her. I'd be happier, too. She didn't run away screaming when I did that. 300 250 <laughs> <laughs> 250 sold. Sold. Excellent. <laughs> Mark, he's a little more enthusiastic about selling these things than Miriam is. Miriam, perhaps you want to make us some coffee. We're going to deal here yeah. with Mark. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, just before we leave this space, what can you tell me about this? That is a new harvest table. A wall. Now we've got the red one out of the way, and we realized that, hey, she's not too bad on that type of thing. So I thought I'd take a run at her on the green piece. No skeletons <laughs> in the closet? No, a lot of books. Uh, wow. Piece. If we buy that baby, it's going to take a while to <laughs> empty it. <Yeah. laughs> no, always go quick. Yeah. Don't worry. That was used in their kitchen. It's like a jam cupboard, except exactly, an extra big one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. How much do you want for it? Oh, she gulped. <laughs> no. Mark, get back here. Oh, God. Get my no, 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 no. I'm here. No, no. I'm uh, here. Is this a big piece or an ordinary piece? But it's a big piece. <laughs> <laughs> I would say eight's what I'd be prepared to That's our, that. That's what you we need. You mean eight, 800? 800. Yes. That's what we need to pay to sell it, because we're probably going to price it at 14, sell it for 12. 900? How about 850? Fair. Done. <laughs> <laughs> how easy that was. I'm noticing that Mark is, he's piping in. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark Scott. Uh, I, I keep forgetting to well, talk. He, he's, he's talk to yes, to you. Mark, Mark is your best friend. That's right. Yeah. Mark and Miriam are so different. 
but they're so much fun together. She's Parisian French. He's sort of a, a guy from the neighborhood. Miriam is the negotiator. <laughs> yes, because I'm a tough person. Exactly. Let's see what you got in this room here. Right here. Wow, there's things everywhere, Scott. There are. That is a very old desk also. Fine desk. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that's just a classic. I know Scott really loves nature, naturalistic things. And I thought, well, here's a beaver with a corn cob. <laughs> I didn't know beavers ate corn. Now, where's his yeah. tail? It's a muskrat. It isn't a beaver. No, it's not a beaver. It's a dog of the prairie. Yeah, it's a big groundhog. It's a teeth prairie on. dog. It's the Texas prairie <laughs> dog. <laughs> it is really bad, but it's big. And if you can't make it good, make it big. I cannot sell under $50. I can say I've never seen him before. <laughs> not, not that often, no, never no. before. I'd be okay if we said we won't see him again. Yeah, I would be too, but you know what? We might have to have him for a mascot. Oh no. So, are you serious? Like 50's the rock bottom? Yeah. He's a, he's a special. 40 bucks. He's like he's... Okay, Deal. <laughs> You killed me! I'm just gonna go to the OTA! No, no, no! She got me in a moment of weakness. He's worth about two bucks, right? But the look on Sheldon's face was worth every cent of that 40 bucks. He's riding in your seat, buddy! And I'm hitchhiking. You don't like Skippy? I like Skippy, I just didn't have him in mind for our mascot. I see a whole bunch of little ducks all over the place. Yes, yeah, yeah. antiques one in wood. These were good old working decoys, and the quantity makes them very desirable. What is your bargain price on a flight of ducks? Four hundred altogether. That's a, that's a good deal. No, no, but don't put this. Three hundred and ninety-five dollars yeah. per duck. <laughs> My heart can't take much <laughs> more of this. Sorry, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ducks are not the hottest thing going these days, right? But I think we could do 300 for a flight of ducks. Deal. See, there was a good... <laughs> Miriam, <laughs> I like the way you just made a decision. What'd you find, Scott? Well, it's an old, old photo album of some sort, yeah. and I think it's got cards in it. Yeah, the cards are from 1900. So what would a book like this be worth to you? See, what would you offer me? Well, for me to buy that book, I'd have to buy it no more than hundred dollars. Scott offered you one hundred. We left this little Porteous fellow sitting here. Mm -hmm. I'd offer you a hundred for him. So that's two hundred dollars. I would say I'm going to negotiate. Mm -hmm. not, not, no, no, no. Not, not that one. I was surprised Mark actually stepped in and said, whoa, normally he was stepping in and going, yeah. Are you telling me you don't want to sell this? Because actually, I think it's more valuable. It's a value, a good, good piece. I yeah, think it's very, a good piece too. A very good piece. But if it's 300 retail, we got to buy it for less to sell it, right? Mm -hmm. 250 for the two piece. Are we going to create a marital disturbance? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Okay, go ahead. 250. <laughs> when you're married, the woman's a boss. So I'll let I her think, do. Uh, no, I am the <laughs> yes. one who negotiates right. too generally. And there's a cabinet in the kitchen. Yeah. Go ahead. Miriam had mentioned another primitive piece in the kitchen. Oh, the oh. Blue room. Ah, oh, there's the cupboard you're talking about. That is an old cupboard from the farmer's too. Original colors. It was blue, which is good. It was big, which is not good. Looks like it's been rehinged a couple times. Mm. We have to ask? The price. The price. But I'd like to ask Mark. You don't want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think it's a box. I don't think it's a box. Speak it's a box. Speak a it's a box. <laughs> You're a so, wise man, Mark. <laughs> they keep it good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, what can you offer me? I would say $500 would be the most I'd ever spend for a piece like this. $500 a deal. Are you sure? Well, we can put all the stuff. A, I was shocked at how big an offer Sheldon made on it. And B, I was shocked that she took it. And you can't bug me about <laughs> Skippy anymore, buddy. I'd right. say we're done, and we probably have one piece of furniture on the roof. What a day, what a fish. <laughs> great, great people.
I can hold it. Nope, we're good, we're good. Don't Whoa. get a hernia. <laughs> that was a great time. Thank you very time. much. Enjoyed Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. You're a hard bargainer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he's not. No, I know that. So I think I, I get a good deal and they get a good deal. Bon chance. Yes, bon chance. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I, I enjoy their company. And we invite them to come back. Hey. <laughs> Skippy. Well, that was a lot of fun. What a great couple. They were a great couple. Yeah. They had some fun things. Yeah. She was really fun to negotiate with. Oh, yeah. You know, you never knew she was bluffing you, right? Because when I said 40 on Skippy, she said, I couldn't sell them for less than 50. I said 40, and she had her hand out, done, <laughs> quick. <laughs> So I think we're pretty darn close here. Yeah, we're going for a pick in the eastern townships of Quebec, one of the oldest parts of the province. And we're going to see Guy. He's got all sorts of everything. Supposedly a barn full of stuff. <laughs> this could be our guy right There's here. There's a barn. Yeah. I think this is the place. Oh. Yes. oh look, he's got advertisements of everything, it's everywhere. So Man. There is a pile of There's stuff. There's your red Indian sign. Oh, oh yeah. Hey. Wow. And there's stuff spilling out the sides. Wow. You'd be Guy. Yes, sir. How are you? Great. I'm Sheldon. Nice to meet you. And Scott. Nice how to meet are you? you? So how does one guy accumulate this much stuff? Auctions and garage sales and uh, knowing a lot of people. My father and mother used to collect antiques and go to auctions, and they used to bring me there when I was a kid. I was hoping someday I'd be able to go to auctions myself, which I ended up doing a little bit. <laughs> There's a few treasures here. Yeah. OK. Where do you suggest we start? You're leading us this way? Why not? The garage. I'm going to walk between the gas pumps. <laughs> wow. There's stuff everywhere. Holy. I can't keep it all. And I've decided to let some stuff go. I know there's more out there. And the fun is to find it, buy it, and find a new home for it after. Look at that Wilson's banner. Ah. La vie est bon moment. And look, he's got the big trout with a fly. I don't think that's particularly yeah. old. Gee, you'd help us with that. I'd say 50s, 60s. Look good in a fishing lodge, wouldn't it? Yeah. When it's up high like that, does that mean it's not for sale? Uh, no, sometimes it's for sale. It looks like it's fairly complete. Yes. But I can see it's got a little bit of a ripple. It's had a yeah, little bit exactly. of moisture. What would you want for that? $200, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's got a chunk right out of it here. It had some water damage on this end of it. I still liked it, but I wasn't going to think about making an offer on it unless we couldn't find anything else to buy. Wow. I can get you out of bed with that in the morning. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Except it's me getting you out of bed. <laughs> Guy had a fire alarm box. It's an old one. What's it going to take to, to send that one to the prairies? Uh, I, I bought that at a dealer. So I need about 450 for that. Whoa. He had paid a lot of money. I've got 350 into it. Yeah. yeah. And he overpays because he loves it so much. If you had the right buyer for it, you yeah. might take a step on it. I just yeah. don't know if we got the right buyer. But there's lots to look at, so let's continue. Uh, I see you had a big red Indian sign out there. Yeah. Do you have any of that are in a little better shape? Right over here. Wow. Now that is a killer. He went on a post to tell you, of course, to keep to the right. There's a, there's a Red Indian gas station uh -huh. up ahead. And it dates back in the 30s. Red Indian, of all the oil and gas collectibles, is king of the castle. Absolutely killer image. I'm guessing <laughs> you've been offered a lot of zeros for that. That's not for sale. Guy wants good dollars for his stuff. Uh, I'd like to look at that. So I'm now switching gears and I'm saying, okay, now I'm going to go after the rare and the mint. Up on the shelf, I spotted an Anarco tin and a Mazda lights display case, automobile left. The Anarco, that's a rare one. I've not seen that one before. Got the guy on exactly. it. That makes all the, the difference, exactly. right? The Mazda light. 
was in pretty well mint condition. It's an old store display would have sat in the auto shop, right? Yep. And it's got the little lamps in there. That's right. A lot of people will use these for displaying stuff in, right? Right, right. What would you want for the Mazda lamp? $250. And what would you want for the Anarco tin? 80 If I took both of them, could you give me a bit of a break? This 250, 80, and how about 275 for the pair? No, I can't. What can you do? Uh, 320 for the. You're taking the 10 bucks off. I'm taking a big the whole 10 dollars <laughs> off the can. <laughs> you are hurting me, Stop man. This. Let's go look at the little garage. I'm worried. Guy wasn't bending at all on his prices. You wouldn't do 300, eh? How about 310? Okay, I'll take that. Everything has a, a value and I try and evaluate it for what it's worth. <sighs> Is this one any warmer? Not really. <laughs> Is that a boat prow or something? Yep. It's got it's some got, design it's got to it. got some design. I want to use it as a light. Now, just out of curiosity, if I was going to decide I wanted to have a stupid looking lamp, yep. what would you charge me for that? The 150. Ooh. Whoa. That seems like a lot. Sheldon's frustrated. He's not coming down at all on his prices. When I give a price, I expect to sell it for that price. I just don't want to negotiate too much. You got an ice cream sign here. What about it? Very good condition. It is in good condition. What would you be looking for out of this one? Uh, 250. Are you going to leave me some meat on the bone, Guy? Are you going to give me a bit of a deal? I got to sell it, remember. This is, I'm not a collector. I'm a seller. Two and a quarter. I like the condition. Excellent condition. But where we're coming from, English over French, pretty much every time. Uh, Send it off to Mont Tremblant where it belongs. It's red, Sheldon. <laughs> we're playing good cop, bad cop. Two and a quarter, done. That's good. The ball is rolling. You almost had me crying there yeah. for a minute. <laughs> Are we going in here? Yep. We're right in. Whoa. Wow. You got some stuff here. Holy. Jeez, I've got the pair for this one. 20 bucks? 25. 18? <laughs> 20 is fine. Done! I won one! Sheldon, I yeah. won one! <laughs> I think we should move along. There's probably another barn to be had. It never ends, does it? Never ends. My goodness. I know what my friend Scott would say. He'd say, you're a sick man. <laughs> the barn's huge and it's chock-a-block full of stuff. Check this out. Whoa! <laughs> what was this, G? Part of a, a sign, a, a trade yeah. sign or... Wrought iron? Yeah. Looks like it's from the Art Nouveau period. Would you part with it, Guy? Yes, I would. Uh, $50? Take 30? No. 40. 40. Sold! Does this work? Yes, it, oh yes it does. It helped that he understood that I liked what he liked. Isn't that nostalgia at his finest? <laughs> <laughs> what would you want for this wonderful piece of 1974? I go hundred dollars. I'd pay that much for somebody to take it away, but that's okay. Deal on it, Scott. Uh, I haven't seen this one before, so I'm gonna offer you 50 bucks on it. Uh, the best I can do is 75. Well, you know, that's the best bubble one I've seen, so I'm gonna take your 75. <laughs> much to my partner's chagrin. Negotiating was a lot of fun. <laughs> do I have to shake on it? <laughs> You gotta love this fella. Voyageur, what's the story? That's a Labatt uh, 50 advertising. It was used at the entrance coming in a hotel. You know, come on in and have a 50. So what would your price be on something like that, Guy? I can go uh, 275. And where did the number come from, 275? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're honest. You got a little guy out front. What would you do if we packaged the two of them together? I can go 350. For the pair? For the pair. It's your call. Any room to move? 300? Yeah. 300 for the pair? Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter, done. Thanks. See, look at him, Chell. He's a little rough, yeah. but you know, he's still a cool little guy. Anything advertising is good and popular. Anybody that collects liquor memorabilia, beer memorabilia, is gonna wanna have that piece. 
Is there any story behind the beaver? My friend think... loves beavers. Sheldon's never met a beaver he doesn't like. You buy every beaver we see. What would you want for him? $40? I was kind of thinking 20 How well, about we split the difference? Michael, yeah, 30 30 it is. Done. That's fair. Thank you. He's turned. That's good. The ball is rolling. Looks like it's 1940s Miami Beat. $10. That's exactly what I was going to say. We got a deal. How's 50 50 is fine. Done. Thank you. Can we do 100 Perfect. Thank you. What would you need for a float? $40? $40? I was thinking $20. And do you know what it is? It's the top of a barber pole. It's not a buoy? Store advertising, I think. I don't know. We'll get back to it. Oh, wow. I immediately saw the Butterick store display. Sheldon, come look at this. Killer piece, all wood, great advertising. Here's Butterick himself as well. Nice to have the, yep. the sign along with it. What would you want for the cabinet and the sign? 200 for the sign and 500 for the cabinet. That's nice. Guy, do you have any room in this? Six, 650. Given all the stuff we bought, could you do 600 for the pair? Sure. Yeah, sounds good. Thank all you. All right, thank you. Thank Merci. you. Okay, let's get out of here and get that van loaded up. I had to bring it out just to look at it one more time. <laughs> and I still think that was the top of Barber Pole. You guys <laughs> seem to like it? I love it. Yeah. Put it in the truck. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, you're a gentleman. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm going. Thanks, Guy. In the end, that was a really good day. We could have spent a lot more time and a lot more money there. The last time I think we picked from dusk till dawn. <laughs> hey, thanks, Guy. Thank you. Next time we bring the semi, we load her up. We can go back here. <laughs> Every year, and you'll see a lot of new stuff. Thank bon you. Bonne chance, mon ami. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bon yeah. Chance. Take care. Bye bye. Real happy with today. He was a good guy. He walked away with some mint things and some really unusual things. We have a relationship. We'll do business with him again. What can you tell me about Sherbrooke? Oh, we're right here in the heart of the eastern townships of Quebec. They made a lot of furniture here in the 20s and 30s and 40s. Down the road here, Jean-Pierre apparently has a 10-room house. Wow, that's a big house. Yeah, big house, and he's the ultimate garage sailor. Ooh, that could be interesting, you know? Yeah. Now wants to sell a lot of this stuff that he's been garage sailing for years. Wow. So who knows what we're going to see. Yeah. If you've got a 10-room house, it's going to be one of these. I think we're close. Nice old Victorian. I think it's right here. As we approach JP's house. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. It's an old Victorian. This should be exciting. I'm always excited to get into a guy's place that's been doing it for a long, long time, lives in an old house. I'm looking forward to it. I love the deck, too. Yes. Hey, bon hey. matin. You must Bonjour. be Jean-Pierre. Yeah. Yes? You're interested in antiques. Well, I'm passionate about antiques. I know we're in for a good day, because this guy's a picker. You can see it in the way he looks, the way he dresses. That's why I'm in. The house is old, and everything inside is old. We'd love to yeah, okay. see what you got. OK, come in. Yeah. As we walked in, there was stuff everywhere, and it looked good. When I see antiques in the newspaper, I run be the first there and try to hunt these antique things and get them. There is a ton of stuff I want to buy, and hopefully the prices are right. See, so you got a pickle jar there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's pull it out and take a look at it. On a table is an advertising jar, pickle jar. This is probably a jar that would have come over from England filled with pickles. 
or it would have been sent here and then you filled it with pickles here. I believe you because most people here were British. Hey. You like pickles or you like jars? I like advertising. What would you want for something like that? I don't remember how much I paid that. I bought that many years ago. I would say like 50 bucks. Is that what you priced it at, 69? Yeah. I'm noticing that JP's got prices on a lot of things. He sells mostly to dealers. The air time the public will come in and either buy or sell to him. How about 40 bucks? Got a deal. Okay. First sale of the day. Like really fair price on that, so I know we can deal with this guy. Hey, I like the washstand that it's yeah. sitting on. That's kind of an interesting piece of Canadiana. Yeah. Probably had a harp or a, or a little backsplash on it. Yeah, that's what they call a backsplash. Yeah. But it's kind of nice. It's nice, clean oak. What would you want for that? I don't know, hundred dollars. Could we say seventy-five? Okay. Seventy-five. Done. Okay. Great. Well, I have a few things downstairs. You want to get a look? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. We feel privileged when we get into well, somebody's attic okay. or their yeah. basement. Can I look through the snowshoes? Yeah, you can. There's enough snowshoes here to do all of southern Alberta. Everybody gets a pair. Sheldon is picking the cream of the crop out of them. This one looks like really old. You can tell the thinness of the wood okay. and the thinness of the okay. gut. Turn of the century, 1920. These ones are not that old, but they're an oddball shape, aren't they? Those would be the 50s, 60s. Those were native-made snowshoes, decorative. They're for the cabin. They're the look. The old babiche is what people want. It looks like we got three pairs and an orphan. What would it take to buy them all uh, right here? The whole? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about, like, average price for each $50. That's 150 for the three. How about 130? And we throw in the orphan. Pay me. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I love your basement, man. Great. Yeah. I thought you said you love me. That's it, but no, that's no. okay. I like we <laughs> love you too. Okay. <laughs> We're picking from the pecker. That it doesn't get any better than that. We're getting the best of what he's got. That's the piano stool. Revolving top. So you can go up and down. It can be either used with a pump organ or a piano. I always like the glass ball and the feet. Those are nice. Yeah. The unusual part is this one has a back, and that's much more rare. What would you want for something like that? Oh, oh big well, piece, big piece. No. <laughs> Usually I restore them. Yeah. And then I get a better price. When they're restored, I get like 175 How much do you sell them for in the rough? $100. Your call, bud. 100 bucks? Yeah. Done. OK. This looks like a piece, what we would call trench art, even though it's not necessarily made in the trenches, but that whole genre of items that they made out of shells or military pieces has come to be called trench art. It's quite cool, because he's married a lamp base with eagles on it, married it to a shell. In the First World War, Generally, it was done in the trenches, so people only had very crude implements, and they would be very folky and crude okay. looking. Later on, they call it trench art, but this was made in a factory. When I say a factory, though, I mean like on a base, an army base or something. Okay. He would have had an old shell, and he would have probably been at somebody that was in the machining business before the war, and he just made something that was cool. One of the reasons I got a soft spot for trench art is because I have at home from my great-grandmother's estate a piece of trench art that her husband carved in the trenches in France and sent home to her. Oh, yeah. Now, what would you sell that for? Uh, my price, I thought, was 125 but, you know, this one is dealable. Uh, I think a good price for us to pay for it to let us make a little bit of money is 75 bucks. Deal. Excellent. This time, I say deal. Yeah. I like that one. Scott and Sheldon, they're like me, passionate guys. I said, that's the guy I can show things, and they will appreciate that. What do you think? We take a look on the other side here? Wherever you want, yeah. Let's go. Hey, look at this room. Wow, that's a wild chair, isn't it? It's both attractive and creepy at the same time. Can I sit in it? Yeah. I think it's like a, a lazy boy. Whoa. You can push more. Oh, it's, it's solid. Don't be worried. And you want to get it lower. Just a second. Oh, man, Sheldon, you go pick. I'm sleeping. There's a curved glass china cabinet right behind you. Don't recline too hard. I really like the, the cabinet. 
Yeah, this looks to be in pretty good condition. Replacement handle and a little bit of the original finish is starting to lift. The main thing is three panels of curved glass. You have a price in mind? What do you think, Scott? I think we could maybe do 400, 450 tops. Don't break the glass. That's the price of the glass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think we can't get any glass I know. in there. 450. OK. All right, got a deal. Thank you. Yeah. I take it that the rest of the stuff in here is sort of your good yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Let, yeah. Let's head to another room. OK. This is supposed to be the kitchen. <laughs> you can notice that because there's a bridge on the stove. But I don't <laughs> this is my kind of kitchen. I love this yeah. This is a guy's kitchen. Yeah, okay. You got some old <laughs> stuff in here, Jean-Pierre. Well, that thing's approaching 150 years old. It is ancient. Look at the stenciling on that. I love the yeah. wheels. Oh, look at the finger joints, Scott. Yeah, finger jointed. This piece looks like it's hand forged on the end, yeah. Sheldon. Oh yeah, done by a wheelwright. The wheels were amazing on it. Oak wheels, hand forged steel all around. I love that wagon, because it's old, it's primitive, it's in the rough, it hasn't been dicked with too much. I got that a Four. few weeks ago. It was all dusty and dirty. Yeah. I... Could we buy that from you? If there's one thing I'm taking home today, it's that wagon. Mmm. You're, you're, you're talking about my favorite item. I would hope to get it normally for $250 or so. The price I paid for that, and uh, well, it would be a little, I like it around $500, you know. If we step up and offer you four, would that do it? You know, it's not always the price, it's the I item. Would... Well, I guess so. so I'm hey. shaking quick on that one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Something you know what? That, feels so... that, that made my day, because oh, we're, yeah? we're driving back to the prairies yeah. with just a special piece from Quebec. The guys are great. They know about things, they know I know it, they deal, and I'm a dealer. I like that. Oh, Scott. He takes us upstairs to this room that is just filled floor to ceiling with stuff. Wow. This is my, like, private, private. Oh, are we in the inner sanctum? Nobody usually comes here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, things are here for a long, long time. Yeah. Say, Jean-Pierre, okay. yeah. would you, would you part oh, with golf some club. golf clubs? All hickory shafted clubs. One, two, three, four, five. Like 15 bucks each? I was thinking more of 50. These five right here. You never think over right again. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened that's yet. The, yeah, pickers. <laughs> yeah, that's where you pickers. Oh, it's okay. Oh, oh, thank you very yeah. much. Well, that would have been a great toy when it was new. It's a rocket ship, and those are popular. They're guys who collect only space collectibles. American made, but this is a, a, a Marx toy. Really rough condition. So what would you want for something I, like that? Uh, uh, you don't want to sell it, do you? OK, I'll make you a price, and this time you say yes or no, you don't do it. OK. 50 bucks. How about if I don't negotiate on that, but you give me a really good deal on the Hamilton? Does that mean you're going to negotiate on that? Absolutely. OK, I'll start at 100. 45. I'm at 75. How about 60 bucks? 65. I said 50 on this. Yeah. How yeah. much did you say? 60. And I give you your 50 for that. Right, right, right. The, Done? Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. You do have a couple lamps here that I like. Yeah, the, they're probably from the 50s. Yeah, maybe even a little earlier than that. But maybe yeah. could be from the 40s. I'm not sure. Those two you're touching, they're, 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 those are pairs. It's a matched pair, which is very important when you're buying lamps, because somebody can put them beside a mantelpiece or in a corner. Would you sell me this pair here? They're the better ones. Most of them had three rings. These had four rings. It also had four rings on the bottom and four rings on the top. Well, I'll tell you, that's the last piece I'm going to sell in this room. <laughs> 150? How about 100 and a quarter? Right. Let's go clean out the van and see how much room we got. OK. I'm thinking, how are we going to get all this stuff into our truck? Straight up. 
turn it around so the fat goes through. Okay. So everything went in. There's no room left in the Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so long, partner. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, Keep picking. Great guy, great prices. I'm coming back. Love that wagon. We made a friend today, and we made some money. It doesn't get any better than that for us. We're going to see an appraiser we know in Montreal, Patrick. We're going to take him a couple of lamps that we picked up. Well, Montreal is one of those incredible bastions of modern design and furniture. There's more modern here than there is in our market. I'd be interested to see what he thinks in terms of the market in Montreal. He's an auctioneer. He knows his trade. He knows the market. Here we go. This is the place. Hopefully, <laughs> these are getting heavy. They're very nice. They're in good condition. They're almost new. The guy had a bunch of them, but they were all a little busted or missing pieces or they didn't match up. We grabbed the two that were repaired. Most of them are broken because it's aluminum. It's very thin aluminum, so they're sometimes they're crushed. crushed or some screws are missing. But these ones look very nice. They're in good condition. You made a good deal. Have you sold anything like this before? Yeah, usually I sell them. I never sold them in pair. In fact, the, those lamps are Art Deco period lamps from about 1900. 1920, 1925. Is the market for modern strong? They are still in style. How about 100 and a quarter? I think that a pair like this should sell in the auction between 400 and 600 dollars for wow. the pair. <laughs> I think we did well on those. Hey, thank you, Patrick. Right, it was yeah. my pleasure. Yeah, yeah it was great. Uh, but I got one more thing. Oh. I want you to look at a really high-end item. Good, the surprise. Mm -hmm. Okay. I apologize for my partner. Okay. Now look. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, have you ever seen one of those before? Yeah, but alive. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little friendly bet going. So the bet is, how much money did we lose on Skippy? Forty bucks. He's like he's okay. Stop. Deal. So what do you think I could sell Skippy for at your he auction? He shows up in the middle of the auction and... Uh, I would say around $12. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't lose... Thank you very much. I didn't lose as much as I thought. I thought I was going to be down to two bucks. <laughs> if you keep it as a mascot, it's He's worth... He's yeah. worth more to me. Oh, come on. <laughs> you were most kind. Thank you very right. much. Thanks a lot. Right. Thanks again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Poor Skippy. <laughs> Why don't I go this way? You go that way. Oh, 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 oh. That's what you look like first thing in the morning. Walk this Walk way. way. Yeah. Was that your idea of four <laughs> <laughs> Oh! That reminds me of my youth right there. God right. loves it. The well, there's some stuff I want, but give me a decent offer for God's sakes. I'm Scott Cousin. I'm Sheldon Smithen. We're picking. We travel all over Canada, coast to coast, from the West Rocky Mountains to the Eastern Shores and all the back roads in between. Looking for hidden gems in people's basements, attics, and bars. Sometimes we take a gamble, trust in our gut to make a buck. Just like the people we meet, every story is different. It's not just us. It came on pretty quick, so. I can't believe this. You can tell I've done this in my former life. Where's your ass going? <laughs> Just hold it for a sec. I'm gonna shove it back in. Here we are. Yikes. <laughs> We're down a liter or more. Uh, yeah, I'd say more. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope she hobbles into Winnipeg. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope we make it to Winnipeg. Betsy, please. We made it. Whoa, that was a close call. <laughs> 
Winnipeg's always been a good place to pick. Whenever I come out here, I've always bought something. And I think it's because of the demographics. A hundred years ago, Winnipeg was quite affluent. It was the Chicago of the North. Exactly. We're going to the flea market today. The excitement that you've got going today is just unbearable. <laughs> I'm trying to be calm. I'm a little pumped here for the market. Whereas you, on the other hand, put on that gaucho hat. <laughs> Scott's new look is totally my responsibility. I found his hat for him. Oh, and behold, the rest of the look all came about in the same shop. Sheldon found it for me. I always listen to Sheldon. I'm quite proud of it, actually. Members of the opposite sex are really going to like that look. Would you date a man that looked like me? <laughs> You walk into this flea market and it slaps you in the face. Oh, man. There's stuff everywhere. Look at this place, Scott. I love flea markets. I do. I it is it. a buffet for the eye. It's fabulous. Why don't I go this way? You go that way. When Sheldon and I go to a flea market like this, we try to cover as much ground as we can as quickly as we can. Well, most of the time, you're not going to get a screaming deal, but every now and then, there's a diamond in the rough. There we go. That's a beauty. What about your antler lamp? They sell for about seven online. There's a lot of booze to cover. A lot of stuff here. Sheldon, what do you think of Fat Elvis? What do you want for this? 25. You know how some things are so bad they're good? This is so bad it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving around with a guy that looks goofy, and now he wants to start buying goofy stuff. I don't think I can do 25 on Fat Elvis. Somebody's got to bring us down to earth. Stay, Fat Elvis. We've got to pick some merchandise here, so. Any chance of seeing the Rolly? This one here? Yeah. Yeah. The 1972 uh, Rolex pie pan, original bracelet uh, yeah. riveted. <laughs> asking for that. I'd need about 1800 for it. Oh. To turn it over, I don't know that there's anything in it for us. Yeah. So what do you have on that Addison radio without the knobs there? They call it a farm radio because it was the cheapest version of that kind of radio. It works, but in the back there's a little chip missing. It's a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Nicely made, boy, if you want. And uh, if they were you with the shipbuilding. Oh. Mm, still sharp. I think we'd be doing good if we could find one great item. Hey, seeing you home. Hey, <laughs> you need I that hat, man. Just to rival you. <laughs> I'll buy it for you if you wear it for the rest of the day. What we're looking for is something that isn't of any value here, but is back in Calgary. There's got to be something here we can buy. That's what I keep saying. On. we got to leave with a treasure. Dig, Scott. Dig. Go find me a bargain there. Come on, Scott. I know you can do it. At this point, I'm thinking desperation is setting in. I got to get something. I'm getting hot. I know Scott's going to find something. He's so persistent. It makes him the ultimate picker's picker. Hey, look. I look up and see a couple of fire hats. Can I see it? Sure. This is an old leather captain's helmet. And this is... Uh... I would call this a lead hands helmet. It's leather. Yeah. Huh. I know that leather fire hats are tough to find. I had a chance to buy a Calgary one one time and didn't. Kicking huh. yourself still, eh? My guess is these would be, what, 1920s? That's yeah. That's what I was going to say, 20s. Yeah. Condition is all important with something like that, and that was in excellent condition. That's New York. Does it say New York? No, I've got a whole bunch of tie clips with that same insignia on. It's New York. Okay. The fact that it's an American one means it's going to be worth substantially more. The fact that it's a New York American one might mean that it could be really good. What would you want for that? About 300. That's a fine. Did you just make that price up? Out of the air. I just picked it out of the air. I was going to suggest, what if we just swap for the gaucho? you never seen a guy picking a gaucho, have you? Oh, I actually wear hats like that myself. Yeah. yeah. Make an offer. Let's let's take our best shot. I was going to say two on the pair. Two on the pair? That's what I, well, you said oh. make an offer. I, that's the offer I was going to yeah. make. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, fellas. Because I want to make you happy. I'll give you the pair for 300. Boom. Quit hitting the good hat with yeah. the crappy hat, okay? <laughs> Easy on that, Rick. Two. All right, you offer me two for this. 
And I'm offering you this for $75. That's a joke. Don't touch this. All right. Okay. I'm going to risk it again. I'm in between you to referee. All right. Yeah. Two and a quarter for the pair. Two and a half for the pair, you got a deal. Let's shake on it right now. Very good. Oh, don't, oh, don't, oh, don't touch that. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> We've done all the damage we could ever possibly do there. We walked out there, I think, with one exceptional item. Well, the best item in the place by far. All right, we're out of here. He walks up this way and turn right. We're going to see the ultimate Frankenstein collection. I thought you'd get a kick out of this, and we're not too far away. Jeff's a serious collector. Stick with me, buddy, because I might even find you some Dracula stuff. I'd like to see that. Yeah. When I was a kid, I stayed up late and watched a Dracula movie. Holy smokes, that scared me for years. Used to go to Any, bed with a Bible and after that. There's Frankenstein right there. This has got to be the place, eh? That's what you look like first thing in the morning. <laughs> Coffee! Scott. I think it's just a mannequin. Hey, guys. Oh, hey. Hey. How are you? Good. Scott Cousins, how are hey, you? Hey, Scott. I'm Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. Frankenstein, Einstein. All the Steins. It's sort of like the Frank Einstein whole Nothing like a bad pun, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, well, let's go inside and take a sure. look at the collection. Come on in. Whoa. So, <laughs> this is it. This is it. My basement is not a very typical rec room. This is where I've dwelled for many years. <laughs> Jeff is a serious collector. It's got a lot of Frankenstein monsters and Dracula and a few mummies. There is a huge, huge market for this kind of thing. Comic conventions far outstrip any other kind of collectible convention. And this is a subgenre of the comic movement. So there's a ton of people that would love this stuff. Everything's for sale. I've been buying and selling for about 14 years now. So. I can let it go. I'm not attached to really too many things. I see something I like already. Marty Feldman from Young Frankenstein. I love Young Frankenstein, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. That was a really good likeness of him. Walk this Walk way. Walk this way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goofiest look I've ever seen on yeah. a Frankenstein. <laughs> A lot of times what they do for the Frankensteins anyway is they'll take a scene from the movie and they'll replicate that. And this is the part where he's first speaking and he doesn't really speak. It's more like a growl, so it's out the side of his face. So what's this one from? This was made in very small numbers and it's wax. Wax is a real tough thing to do. It's really creepy. The interesting thing about the modern genre of, of horror collectibles. These hands are worth a lot of money. Seriously? Yeah. Really? Is that they're very expensive to buy. Wax is a real delicate thing, and as you can see, it's been broken here. It's not like you're paying five or ten bucks for them, you're paying two, three, four hundred dollars for them. Tell you what, I could use a back scratcher yeah. every once in a while. Let's say they were perfect. Be around two thousand dollars. Whoa! <laughs> Find myself another back scratcher. Yeah. If somebody said you could keep one, oh, no. one piece, <laughs> which one? Well, I guess it would have to be this, because you can't get this. This one was made in 1961, and it's very sought after by the collectors. That's on the album cover of Boris Karloff and Friends. When I first started collecting, I thought I have to get that mask, but I didn't know I would end up getting the actual mask off the cover. So I'll never sell that one. Never. So is that hard or is it a yeah, vinyl mask? It's a rubber mask that's being foam filled to help preserve the shape. I make displays and signs for a living so that I repaint a lot of the stuff that I get because I'm just not happy with the paint job on it. I like to do silver screen look, which is black and white versus color, so I redo them just for fun. He's a really good painter. So he had a little bit of himself invested in that whole collection. And what's the vintage of the collection? Well, the earliest one is this 1961 to uh, more recently, this one here, which was produced in 2008. It's modern stuff that's of interest to collectors today. So there's a ton of people that would love this stuff. This is a great collection of stuff. Hey, look.
This is the guy that scared the crap out of oh, me yeah. when I was a kid. That's a scary one. He had a life-size Nosferatu. Historically, it's very significant in the horror genre. The character was first created in a 1920s movie called Nosferatu, a German expressionist film, absolute cult classic, almost the father of horror movies. And there is a particular level of horror collectors that love just him. sculpted by Mike Hill, and Mike Hill is uh, very renowned. His sculptures are of the best. I didn't paint this. Another fellow painted the thing. The eyes Take a close look at the eyeballs. Like, there's so much detail. Also, the veins and the age spots, but yeah. it's it's the whole thing. It's all in the paint job. You see this, it's alive. But yeah. it's, it's the whole thing. I have a friend that's told me to keep an eye out for anything Nosferatu. He's interested, so it makes me interested. So what would you pay for something like that? Uh, the head, I paid 500 for it, and the body was 200. Painted or unpainted? Painted, just like painted. that. A master painter had done that, so it's going to be the best of the best in terms of that particular item. But I didn't want one of the better things in the basement to be the first deal. So then I just moved on to other things and knew I'd come back to it. He is creepy. That's right. This showcase is just mixed, you know, it's like a mixed bag of nuts. Pee-wee looks so out of place there. Really. I agree. Pee-wee Herman was a very popular kids TV show host. I thought Pee-wee was going to take off, <laughs> so I've got a few Pee-wee Herman items. Until he got caught in a very unfortunate situation in a movie theater. He's creepy, though. Pee-wee <laughs> Pee is creepy for different reasons. Interestingly, though, uh, among adults, his collectability went up after that. <laughs> And you got to recast Big Frankie, right? Yeah, 64 was the original one. Fifteen years ago, oh. you could get a lot of money for one of these, 600 bucks for one yeah. of these things. Yeah. Now you can buy them for like $39. Yeah. So why are you going to pay 600 bucks for right. the old ones? The worst thing you can ever do is yeah. reproduce Repro. something. Never. And the hardcore collector doesn't want to reach. Right. They only want the original one. I saw one online. Last year, no, $3,200. Wow. Because it's still in the box. There's a big uh, market for kits that are untouched. And the box art on oh, some the of box these art. was fabulous. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous art. Oh, I feel like I'm at a, at a convention <laughs> here. <laughs> what does your wife think, Jeff? Well, my wife's pretty scared because she has to walk from the garage door all the way through here, right past and under Nosferatu. And she's a little shorter, so it's looking right at her. So is that your idea of foreplay? <laughs> it's not working anyway, if it is. <laughs> so, Jeff, there is a guy that has told me to look out for something like this. So, I'm trying to make this work price-wise. Right. Are you looking to get out of it what you paid in it? I'd like to get close. He's paid a retail price for it because he's a collector. The head, I paid 500 for it and the body was 200. One of the strategies is you try and ground your position. So if I make the first offer and it's way low, can we do 500? I'm gonna bring him closer to my number than him bringing me closer to his number. Ah, uh, that's, that's kind of low. Um, is there anything else that you see in here that you're interested in? I presume the stuff over here is for sale? Yeah. There's a few things that I got my eye on. Well, I really like Marty Feldman, the young Frankenstein, yeah. and it's a fun piece. It's hilarious, and I know a dozen people that would love to have that. Pee Wee Herman, I know I can sell that, and a Frankenstein. That's a Frankenstein poser, but it's more of a toy, and I'm more into the realistic things than the toys. Uh... What if we did 775 on everything? One more offer. Okay. With everything. 750 Nosferatu, <laughs> Marty Feldman, Pee Wee Herman, and a really bad Frankenstein. You got a deal. Okay. I'm happy with that. It was fun seeing it. Plus, I'm doing a favor for a friend. 
I'm happy with the price. We're only caretakers for so long of this stuff. Jeff's a good guy. He loves this stuff. I think just, just to scare people, we might leave him standing up. Oh, sure. Yeah. Mrs. Jeff gets a break. We got the guy in the van. The count is down for the count. If Mrs. Jeff had been there, Sheldon and I both would have got a hug. He is an ugly SOB, isn't he? <laughs> They'd make a good pair. They should maybe get married. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. It was fun seeing that much Frankenstein around. <laughs> Man, you're a good-looking guy, Marty. It was, it was a, a pleasure. pleasure spending the day, and uh, just don't get stopped by the RCMP. <laughs> They'll see the count in the back, and that won't be good. OK. OK, thanks, thanks a lot. That was pretty impressive. Can you imagine the amount of money he must have invested in that place? So this should be a good fit. Yeah, you're right about that. We're going to see Morley. He's a serious collector, and he's been doing this for a long time. So Morley's got some Inuit carvings. It sounds like he wants to get rid of some of it, or his wife wants to get rid of some of it. Winnipeg was the focal point for Inuit art. In the 1950s, it became popular and started selling in the south. There we are. It looked as a pair of lions. Oh, look at all the stuff in there. Oh, yeah, when you <laughs> look closely, you can tell where the edgy people are by looking at the stuff surrounding the road. This must be Morley's house. Hi, Scott. I'm Morley. Sheldon. Sheldon and Scott. My son. Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi. I'm Sheldon. How long have you been collecting, Morley? 40 years. And what's the pride and joy of your collection? My wife. There oh, you know. you're a smart man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm married to a lovely lady by the name of Marlene. I'm 80 years of age. I live in this palatial mansion. Morley uh, collects a lot of things. I'm a collector of antiques, paintings, sculptures, and art. I love that stuff, you know? We want him to sell because he has too much stuff. We need to make space on the house. <laughs> I see something up there that I want to ask you about. That is either a Darth Vader figure or a Buck Rogers figure. I'm always looking for pop culture action figures. Can I go up there and look? Yeah. Let's see what I can do. And I could see up at the top shelf the legs and arms of what I knew immediately was a 12-inch doll. Scott doesn't miss much. Nope. Battlestar Galactica. That must be yours. Absolutely not. No? Never seen it before. Mine. <laughs> you bought this? Yes. Why did you buy this? Because I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> this is 70s. Guns broken off, unfortunately, on this guy. So if you want it, you make me an offer of minus the gun, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, immediately I could see. Morley's a funny guy, quick with a joke. Yeah, I'll give you twice as much if you get me the gun. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> when I buy something, I have to hide it. My wife says to me, where did you get that? I said, oh, I've had this for a long time. Just moved it around. <laughs> it's like a little shell game. Yeah, yeah, you know, so that's the story. Can I just put him here on the roof of the car? Absolutely, now? absolutely. OK. Well, let him go to the house, see what we've got. Go ahead, do okay, it, after you. and whatever you like. Wow. Yeah. Walked into the living room, and there's art everywhere. As you can see from the house, it's all over the walls and all over the place. But I think they're running out of space now with the stuff. That looks like a Tony Allison there. It is. Morley? I knew that we're going to have some trouble because most people don't even know who Tony Allison is. A very good Manitoba artist. Now, just out of curiosity, would that be something you would sell? Yes. And if so, what would you sell it for? I don't know, about eight, nine hundred. quotes me full bore retail price for it, right there. I quite like this painting. Who's That's that by? That's Josh Kakagamic. He's very good, but yeah. I cannot get any more. I can't. So what would a painting that size sell for? That were one would be get close to $2,000. I like that painting a lot. But tough for a couple of Alberta pickers to make any money oh, on well. that price. Yeah, our problem is, just so you understand where we're coming from, mm -hmm. we're not looking to sell at a retail level. We're no. looking to buy, sort of in yeah. low to medium, sell medium, yeah. and then let the other person make I, the top dollar. I, I understand. Right. And when you see something around here, 
and you like it, make an offer. Okay. I understand exactly where they're coming from. They're out to make a dollar. Why not? Can I uh, play? Sure thing. I learn something about Sheldon every time we go on a pick. I didn't know you were that good. Well, I'm not. <laughs> God, you play fast. I don't care if I ever get back. I've handled lots of player pianos, but they're always uprights. That was a dandy. Oh the God, he plays really well, so you know, doesn't he? I think he was a soprano in the choir at school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're sure amiable, Morley. I try to be. Come on, guys. I'll follow you. <laughs> wow. I love to see Inuit art. Lots Just of take carvings. a walk, take a good look. It's a lot of them. It's a sort of an interesting but crude yeah. piece, right? Uh-huh. He definitely yeah. collects carvings. Yeah. yeah. The problem is when you got a guy that collects Inuit art, I got an Inuit piece. He's usually paid a lot of money for it. What's this one here, Morley? That's, That's unusual. A lady lying on her side. Yeah. I guess she's thinking. <laughs> I don't know. The best of the best is worth astronomical amounts of money. And that goofy one that looks like it's an eagle. What about one of those? What would that sell for? You only ask about the expensive stuff. I always gravitate towards the folksy, naive looking pieces. See, I like the primitive stuff more. Yeah, that's primitive. Inuit art is primarily soapstone carvings. Inuit were nomadic peoples, so the early carvings were quite small. Looks to me like a spirit. They carved subjects that were spiritual, a lot of animal figures. And there's looks one like wing. Yeah, Where's yeah, the yeah. other wing? Hold on. <laughs> I love that stuff, you know? Do you have a sense as to what your price is in of mind? Of course. You go by whether the piece is nice or busy or whatever. Well, because in this market, right, yeah. what you paid for it yeah. is about the most irrelevant characteristic. That's it right. It could be worth 10 times as much or half as much. That's right. It just depends what the market says. But for example, what would that sell for? That'd be close to five, six hundred dollars. And I'm not far off. You're not far off what you'd have to pay in a shop to get it, that's oh, for sure. Oh, you'd pay in a shop more. My instincts are telling me Morley really doesn't want to part with this stuff. What would something like that sell for if you were going to get rid of it? About eight or nine hundred dollars. And his way of hanging on to it is to quote us prices that just are not going to work for us. Why are all the ones I like more money? Well, you only ask about the expensive stuff. Uh, that's my problem. I, I have expensive taste. Expensive taste. taste. <laughs> <laughs> That's whalebone? Yes, it is, isn't it? It's petrified whalebone, dug up from the ice. It's a nice piece. Some holes in the side of it. That had everything you want in whalebone carving. It was big, it was well carved, it was a good walrus. Where'd you get this, Morley? Some fellow brought it from the north, and I picked it up at an auction sale. It might be one in 500 pieces of Inuit carving that's whalebone. When you bought this, did it go for a lot of money? Yeah, because it was rare. So if there's only one piece, you gotta pay for it. There's only one piece here. Do we have to pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I could... They're cute and they're nice. And I will give them a decent discount. So what would a baby like that cost us if we were gonna walk away with it? Well, I'd like to get close to $2,000 for it. Wow, I'd like lot. to. But I think that's closer to a retail price. What do they call that? Champagne tastes on a beer budget? Yeah. When he says $2,000, even though I love the piece and would love to have it, can't even make an offer. Well, why don't we leave the carvings for now? What else can you show us? You have any toys? Well, downstairs. Well, let's check them out. Oh, you got inventory here. Oh, right? yes, I do. This is where it's all at. I do. Show me some toys. What do you want to toys? You big guy. Here. Can I touch this? Yeah. Morley is clearly getting a lot of enjoyment out of the pieces he owns. I just bought it just about four weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Julius Chen 1930s Ferris wheel. They made them right to the 50s. The one that's the most desirable is Mickey, Mickey Mouse, Mouse on the front, and I think it's got Mickey Mouse on the things as well. But I have never seen one as nice. He loves it, you can tell. I enjoy. Your airplane roll. ashtray, what would you want for that? Can't sell it. <laughs> uh, he's attached. This is the oldest piece right here, an 1885 puck. What would you want for that? 
Why? You want to buy it? Maybe. It's if the price sure. is right. Not for sale. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, we have tried to convince him to sell. Hey, that's a great piece, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It was a lovely little Meerschaum pipe. As you smoke them, they darken. Meerschaum is a form of clay. It's soft to the touch, but hardens like rock hard. So what would you want for that? 300. But unfortunately, he wants too much for all the things that he's got. Do you have any more colored radios like this? No, because I didn't bother with them. They're too cheap. Uh, How cheap? $20 and all that sort of stuff. Well, it's not a great radio. No. But I'll give you 20 bucks for it. I don't want to sell it for $20. <laughs> <laughs> He's a crazy SOB, that Marvin. <laughs> if you give me 50, I'll give it to you. But you just told me it was a cheap radio. <laughs> you, asked, you asked me why I didn't collect it. As the time goes on, they, don't, they get rare. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it didn't go so well for selling, but we tried. We've been dealing with Morley, or at least trying to, for quite some time now. Where'd you buy that, Morley? Uh, at a arm show. I hadn't pulled the trigger on a single item. Now, you got a little buffalo down here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a little bronze buffalo. I'm thinking, well, maybe that might get us going. So what would you want for that? About $50. Selling it. Every time I made an acquisition, try 40. It was the thrill of the chase. Try 20? No. It gave me adrenaline to keep going. My wife keeps reminding me that if you die on me, I'll kill you because our home is full. Anything you want before we go? Well, there's some stuff I want, but the prices are not exactly... Uh... Well, what are you uh, concerned with? I well, I love that whalebone sculpture. Well, okay, give me a decent well... offer, for God's sakes. <laughs> but we're so far apart, that's the problem. Scott is intent on that whalebone piece. Morley is not so intent on selling it. All right, what's your highest offer? Come on. Give him your best shot, Scott. <sighs> That's a beautiful piece. Okay, you're not going to be insulted if I... No, no, just don't be so stingy. Well, I, I'm i going to be stingy because I know what they sell for. Sheldon knows what they sell for. God. I happen to like this one. Yeah, okay. So I'd offer you 300 bucks for it. Oh, that's nice. But he said he wouldn't be insulted if I offered him. And I would, normally wouldn't pay that much, except I know I'm not going to get it out of you unless I offer you at least that much. Okay, how about four and a half? I loved it. I wanted to take that away. I'll tell you what, cut to the chase. Yes. Throw in the buffalo and the carving for 400. Now, you got a little buffalo down here. Done. Done. I gave him a deal. I really did. It's going to go to a good home. That's all I can promise That's you. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK. I decided it's time. That's all. Okay. Hey, is there still some stuff outside, guys? Let's go. I asked Michael if he had any of the stuff he had when he was a kid, and the light bulb went on in his head, and he took me out to a shed. Hey. What do we have? Oh! <laughs> I can see them from here. That reminds me of my youth right there. I mean, black light coasters can sell for as much as three and four thousand dollars. So these are got a date from the 70s. Definitely. I won those posters at an exhibition here in Winnipeg. Black light posters were sold in the 60s and 70s. They were 39 cents, 69 cents, 99 cents. I had a room full of them when I was a kid. But they're really collectible nowadays. What would you want for those? Well, how about $20 each? Whoa! Have you been looking on the internet or something? I absolutely have. <laughs> <laughs> These are better, though, than the ones you find at garage sales usually. 40 bucks for the four? That's twice as much as I would have offered you for. <laughs> about 50 bucks for the four, and you can pull them off the wall right now. I've had these for 30 plus years. Okay. Deal. Okay. Sheldon, you got that screwdriver. Okay, thank you. I thought he was going to ask that he was going to get screwed. Okay, there's a chair. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Morley. You're a hard man. Michael, Thank you're you. a hard man, too. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you guys. Yeah, nice Dude, to meet you nice guys. Meet you. Yeah. 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 We had a good time, and we had a lot of fun. As I was walking up to shake his hand, I saw that little Battlestar Galactica figure. 
Unfortunately, he's got the broken thing, so I'm gonna offer you something. I have in my pocket $3. Take it. $3, no, take it, it or leave it. Take it. There you go, hey. one last deal. What a guy. That hurt. But it makes my we, day. We had fun. You know, you made my wife happy, and that was that's great. Nice, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, nice thanks to meet so you. Lot. Thanks for okay, guys. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Like a hood ornament. Look where your uh, toy is going. Yes. Aha. Bye, guys. Hey, that was fun. <laughs> I'd say the odds are better than average. We'll hear from them again. We've got a friend in town. Mike's been in the business for decades. Got a real wide range of knowledge. We're gonna take that fire helmet around to him. We wanna get it appraised because we think it's worth a lot more than we pay. Mike is probably the most knowledgeable guy in the most number of areas in Canada. I'm optimistic. Is that the Houses of Parliament over there? Whatever it sure they call is, it and you'll notice right on top is the famous Golden yeah. Boy. He looks a bit like the FTD Fleurist guy. <laughs> now, he's just up here. But there it is. It's a great, great store. And he sure got it painted up, eh? It's sort of like the Sistine Chapel. I think the guy did it over about 10 years. <laughs> Let's go out and see Mike. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, this should be fun. Hey, Mike. Holy Toledo. How you doing? Sean? How you doing, Mike? Wow. There's stuff everywhere. There's quantities here, isn't there? Been in business 31 years. Selling all sorts of antiques and collectibles. I love it. 4% of people love their job. I'm one of those 4%. Yeah, we got something for you. An old leather fireman's helmet? Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of unusual that you find something like this here, and leather helmets are extremely collectible. Being a New York helmet, unfortunately, they probably produce lots of, probably more in New right. York than anywhere else, but still very desirable. And, and I know some collectors would just go crazy for this. I could tell from the look on his face when he was impressed right off the bat. You know, it's actually in really great shape for a hat of this vintage. I mean, you're looking at 80, 90 years old. If that helmet could talk, yeah. the stories it could tell, I mean, you could see the paint's melted on the top. Yeah. I mean, it's been into some heavy heat and it's got a lot of character. <laughs> The helmet was one of those sort of things. I wish I had found it instead of them. Two and a quarter for the pair. Two and a half for the pair, you got a deal. Very good. Uh, I think to the right collector, you may see as high as 600. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great piece. I mean, I'd love to have it. Maybe even $700 in the right mark. Bingo. Now, can we pick anything here? Anything in the store is for sale. If you leave empty-handed, I'll be surprised. Oh, there are lots to look at. Oh, there's something you don't see every day. King Cole stuff's really tough. Very hard to find. Like, that's a big maritime piece. I bought that years ago, and I brought it home, you know, like a dog with a bone, and I showed it to my wife, and she goes, well, that's nice, but it's not going in our kitchen. <laughs> what would your blow it out price on that be? I paid 100 bucks for it about five, six years ago, so 100 and a quarter. We got a deal. A done deal? Oh, oh look at right. that. You're not leaving empty-handed. I've never left your store empty-handed, Mike. Well, there's always something. Now, judging by the dust, Mike, this one's been here a while. That one's been there quite a while. <laughs> so I was digging around and found a little picture frame, saw that it was a Canada Paint Company store advertising sign. That would have been a hanging sign originally. Right. Yeah. But I'm guessing that thing's no later than 1910. Turn of the century, graphically great, lovely thing. What's it going to cost us? 75. Alrighty. Thanks, Mike. Deal number two. We're starting to pull the trigger on things. We were happy. Mike was happy, too. He thought we were just there for the appraisal. All of a sudden, we're starting to buy. So the ball is rolling. There's a nice sign. Porcelain steel. It's great. The colors are nice. It's strong. It's got one worker. One worker. 
that takes away from the desire it's a little but it's bit of fading. a terrible thing and it's 75 bucks yeah it's a little faded yeah you know, it's got some chips on it but we've been in guys barns and they think they're worth 350. a mint one's worth 350. but yeah. it's got to yeah. be mint for 350. <laughs> but they're never 350 no, when no, they're no, in a barn yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what would the walk away price on that be uh that one there is 65 bucks yeah. Another deal? Another, Another deal. deal. Holy spit, this is gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> I try to price the things so that it's fair to everybody, uh, to dealers to make a few bucks if I can. Yeah, okay, like him. What would you need for him, Mike? Uh, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Looks like a German Shepherd or something. <laughs> He's a boot scraper. Good steel stone oh. boot scraper. Yeah. $25, just to get rid of it. Oh, another handshake. Hey, you got like this. <laughs> Mike, I love your juke. That just screams 60s Sputnik to me. Since 1961, it's one of the last ones with the visible records. And the dome is just spectacular. Yeah. It's one of the big four. You got Wurlitzer, Seberg, Rockola, and you got AMI. Really cool space age design. Very desirable today. And what does a juke like that go for? Well, that one there is 5200. 52. That's retail plus the 20% because Mike really likes it. It sat in our basement for about a dozen years. It's a little out of our price range. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask you about this. Not it, it's not it's my wife loves cats. Yeah. It's a nice little royal ducks cat. She has a white cat just like that one that our oldest knocked over and broke the tail on. It's got the original yeah. decals on yeah. it, everything. Yeah, exactly. Very yeah. sort of uh, late 60s, you'd think. What would you need for him? 25 bucks. I'll buy it for Everybody's bucks. buying. Oh, you got my wife will be happy. You're a hero. I'll more than make my money back on that. I don't invite everybody out here. Fine, Scott right? loves Just a garage. second. <laughs> yeah. Wow, lots of stuff in here. A few things. Oh, man. Mike puts the stuff in the garage that he really hasn't found a spot for in the store. So there's a chance that he's going to give us a better price on that than something that's in the store. That's a nice horn. Yeah. Good old morning glory, you know, yeah. Edison gramophone horn. If you have the machine and no horn, it's a nominal item. With that horn, you've got one of the better, more desirable vintage gramophones and the look to go with it. 50 bucks if you needed one. <laughs> Another John <laughs> Chick. See, it was worth coming to the garage. Uh, already, yeah. A little bit of a mess, but then the garage should be a little bit of a mess, right? <laughs> Never seen this before. You know, the glass radios shaped like liquor bottles. Unfortunately, the labels are pretty much gone, aren't they? Beggars can't be choosers in this business. There's right? nothing you can do about no, the condition, is do. there? That's an old store cosign, right? The image on that one's pretty good. Image would be great. Oh, he's trying to pick her up, eh? sell her a coat. <laughs> She's smiling. And you got a gargoyle over here. Anything with an animal of sorts on it, I like. The frame's been repainted. It's a lollipop sign, would have stood out in front of the gas station. And what's the era of this one? Uh, that one there would probably date right around the 40s. The fact that there's not a bullet hole in this is shocking yeah. to me. No, there's no touch-ups on it. There's one little nick at the base on the, on the other right side. Right there. It's a beautiful sign. Somebody threw a rock at it. Probably. It's a great company, super desirable. I hate to ask the price. It's in the garage, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because there's no room in the store. That one's $1,500. Yeah. $1,500, is that pretty much retail on it? Maybe I could do 10% on it, so like $1,350 would take it away. The reason why it's valued at $1,350, it's a fresh piece. It's never been put in the store. It's fresh. So you got a Philco. Yeah, Philco Predictor. Do you see how the tube twists on it? Yeah. This is uh, 59 to 61, I think, is when they Somewhere did around there. Do you know if this one worked? Uh, the picture rolls on it. So the tube's not gone, but they're a good decorator item, right? Uh, They've used them in so many TV shows, commercials. And so what would you need out of the predictor? Uh, that one, 250. Right. Well, it's not the greatest nick, but... Uh, it's time to come up with an offer and see if we can put a deal together on these items. Well, Mike, I think the rubber's hitting the road here. Because <laughs> we got to hit the road. Yeah, yeah, go on. The mobile oil we like. OK. You've got to get 1350 1350 is it, yeah. That's as good as it gets. 
as they say. What about the predictor? You know what? I don't want to sit out here for the winter. 150 bucks sounds serious. Is that a good deal? Well, I'm gonna shake on the gargoyle piece. Great. Oh, shake on the gargoyle. Hey, 1350 on the mobile sign. 150 on the predictor. 1500 dollars. Scott says we're gonna do well. I'm ready to load. you guys came by. Hey, yeah. Mike. Great seeing you again. I really appreciate it. I made a few bucks, and I think I'll take my wife out to dinner. Tonight. Exactly. <laughs> you, so tell Barb that we bought her dinner. Yeah. yeah. No <laughs> Come back to Alberta. We miss you. Well, yeah. maybe in the spring this time. OK. All right. All right. See, See you, guys. Mike. All right. I'm really happy. Yeah. That was pretty impressive. That mobile gas sign, I really do think we'll do well on. Now, let's make sure we've got Pepsi is loaded with oil. Aren't gonna have any problems on the highway and we just keep on rolling.